All right, man, random thought. Do we think it's time that the U.S. has a federal mandate or law on maternity leave um, for women? And the reason why I ask that, there's this viral story that went out, uh, might have been a week or two ago. Uh, mm-hmm. This girl, Rachel Larson, was uh, had her baby. Um, she's a professional, you know, kind of working mom. Had the 12 weeks off. And just she talks just about the, the struggle of, not really being ready to go back to work and to to leave her kid and, and all that type of stuff. And so, which I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. A lot of women feel that way, whether they're CEO executives or even stay-at-home moms. I mean, they just feel that emotional <coughs> that emotional thing, from what I understand. And we look at a lot of the comments, a lot of the, of course, you know, you try to not look at the comments. But what I understand. <laughs> yeah, you look at the comments and like a lot of, a lot of guys are like, you need to suck it up, duh, 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 you got this. But even a lot of women were like, look, I worked two jobs and da, da, da. I went back to work after my first week. Um, you know, you need to kind of suck it up. And so I started looking around and at, at other countries to see, you know, what, like what is the the law? And actually, U.S. is the only country that doesn't have a set law for what the paternity leave That's would surprising. be. It's up, to, it's up to the employer, you know. But right. look at some of these other countries. It's it's amazing when you see how many weeks. A maternity leave some of these other countries get so you know you're you're a dad now do you, do you think it's time that we look into this and and try to get a federal law of um all companies have to provide x amount of weeks uh with a certain percentage of pay for maternity leave hey let me speak for your um republican friends what are we, socialist country? No, we cannot force companies to do what they want to do. You know, <laughs> what, kind, what kind of communism are you trying to bring to this country? There's these great United States of America. What kind of communist mentality is you trying to bring here? <laughs> Let's be honest, man. It's, not, it's never, it's never going to happen because... Um, just like you said, the reason that there are men on there who are like, oh, suck it up. Men telling women what to do, that's what this country has been built on um, and, and has followed all along. There are men telling women um, about what to do with their bodies. Until, mm-hmm. of course, it's, oh, wait a minute, my mistress has a baby. Get rid of it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, 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 until it affects somebody personally, they don't care. The same thing when it came down to um, to, to gay rights. It didn't matter. So if it, do, it doesn't affect men, they're not going to change this. And do I think it's time? Yes. And at the same time, I do think that uh, you should have paternity leave as well. So let's put some paternity leave in there because, and that's me being selfish because it affects me in this sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. When we knew we were having our, our little angel and, um, you know, like, hey, so do we have paternity leave? And they go, no. Mm. But we do have FMLA. <laughs> or what is it? Is, is that is that the right acronym? I have no idea. You know this thing. Yeah, is it, yeah. There's okay. FMLA. Oh, does yeah. it? Yeah. And use your PTO days. I'm like, why? Okay, you know what? Never mind. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. Should we have it? Yes. But then I'm not surprised that America doesn't because it's you. It's the land of you can't tell me what to do. Um, and also, look at vacation. You can take. Yeah. A week off, but you can't really take a month off like they do in Europe. You go anywhere around the world and you'll find people on holiday from Europe that have been there for like three weeks and have another week to go before they go back. Mm-hmm. So, no yeah, problem. I mean, but look at look at some of these other countries. Uh, Bulgaria, for example, 58.6 weeks of maternity Jeez. leave. <laughs> and the pay rate is it's 78.4% of the mother's previous full-time salary, which comes so out to about 45.9 weeks. Oh, okay, yep. so she still gets almost a year's uh, of her of her salary, um, yep. and gets to stay out. That's fair because yeah. you still need some and of that money to pay for the for the for the temp that's going to fill in. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, totally. Uh, there's a lot of countries that actually do it. You know, Croatia is 30 weeks um, of fully paid maternity leave. You know, mm-hmm. 30 weeks compared to what some companies do as as just 12. But the U.S. doesn't have any. Like mandate for it. And out of all these, I mean, looking at all these countries that do it, Czech Republic, 28 weeks at 62.6% of their salary. Um, so it's, it's, there's, it's possible, but you're right. I don't think we're going to do it because you're not going to force big business and corporations to do anything like that. Um, and that's just who we are in America. If it was something that impacted men, unfortunately, you're right that, yeah, they would change it, but 
I'll, I'll be honest, that 58 weeks seems like a lot. Um, I do believe that some mothers will probably come back before then. Like, Jesus Christ, I got to put this child back in, and I got to put this child in daycare or something, right? Um, the 30 weeks at 100%, I think more people would take that and keep that um, the entire time because it is at 100%. So if there's a sweet spot from zero to 58.6 <laughs> at yeah. 77%. So zero at no given percentage, and 58.6 is, is the max at 77%. I'm going for the 30 weeks at 100%. That's what I would go with. Yeah. I mean, I think 30 weeks on 100% is fair. Um, and um, I would at least say at minimum 12 weeks, 100% paid is the minimum that every company has to do. Because right. Um, right now it's it's all by choice. So some people it's 12 weeks, some people it's, it's this. Um, mm-hmm. But even if you did up to 30 weeks at 100% pay, I think, you know, I'd be curious to see what the studies would show because I don't think everybody's going to take the full 30 weeks. To right. your point, there are certain people, it's, it could be their second child. They've already been through this. They got it. They're good. But at least you have the option compared to the countdown clock of you got 12 weeks. It, whether you're ready or not, you got to come back to this office. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's fair. And then now I think since we've, as a society, have proven we can all work from home in some form or fashion, why not have like another tier where if you don't want to, you know, you got 12 weeks fully paid or you can go to part-time, you right. know, um, for another 12 weeks. You know, if you want Here's to do that, question, that gives though. them a chance to ease into it. Do you cut it off at a certain number of children, though? Because, you know, <laughs> I mean, one child, yeah, I let you have a 30 weeks, that's cool. Then, you know, you know, nine months later, like, hey, guess what? <laughs> like, hold up, wait a minute. And all of a sudden, nine months after that, hey, guess what? Now, at what point do you go, hold up? We cut this off after after the third pregnancy. That's it. <laughs> you got to come back after twelve hours. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, we're, we're gonna need you to we're gonna need you to sign our pull out policy, please. <laughs> <laughs> We've implemented this pull out policy. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. I'm making a shirt with that pull out policy. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. Uh, and I'm just Terrell. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having some crazy conversations? Yeah, like this one, going from serious to crazy, like <laughs> that. <laughs> we are those people, and we've been having these conversations since college. Yes, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and definitely leave a comment. Indeed. Yeah. And, you know, we've... Uh, is it is it tonight? I, I'm, I, I'm so confused on the dates. Is is tonight... The finale? Yes. It is the finale. We find out finale. who yep. Matt James watched. So don't forget to watch The Bachelor tonight. Or you can skip it and just catch our Black Bachelor recaps. We're going to let you know what happened. We'll let you know who won the whole shebang. Who was right all along? Was it Terrell? Was it me? Was it both of us? Because there's a there is a way, or is it none of us? Because there is an actual way that we can both be right, and there's a way that we can both be wrong. Mm-hmm. I doubt that'll happen, but we shall see. <laughs> now you can always join the conversation by commenting. You can agree, disagree, or agree to disagree, kind of like what we do all the time. We, you know, I don't think we're very... All we, the time. We, yeah, so you'll also be putting the, um, running for the monthly regular guys random giveaway. It's the RGRT pod, Black Bachelor Recaps, every Tuesday on YouTube. Well, this will be the last one, um, so let's just, so we won't even say every Tuesday. This is the last Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> on YouTube. Yes. Just search RGRT pod and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Now, let's get back to the show. What made you smile this week, man? Oh... Uh. What made me smile this week? Um, it was a really crazy, busy week um, mm-hmm. this week. And just a whole lot of different things going on, you know, putting in some 12 hour days at work. So Saturday after uh, my my standard Saturday haircut appointment and uh, I got my first three pounds of crawfish of the year uh, this Saturday and it was magical. I, I, I love crawfish season. Um, yeah, it's got to go down. Now that I'm living closer to this particular place I love to go, I had that and then came home and was just um, lazy as hell the rest of that Saturday, and it was glorious. <laughs> Is that the thing they call itis, sir? Yeah. 
Is yeah. that what they and refer you, to when they say the itis has kicked in? Yeah, yeah, it got me. But it just felt good to do nothing, you know, and, and be lazy, right? Um, the, the most biggest accomplishment I did on Saturday is I folded one load of clothes. The other one's still in the dryer. <laughs> well, first of all, there are a lot of people listening right now who go, wait, you folded the clothes? Because just folding the clothes, nobody has a problem washing clothes. Nobody has a problem drying clothes. It's folding them. How yep. many times have you gone someplace and see a pile of clothes? These dirty? No, those are all clean. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So let's back, yeah. back to the crawfish, though, because I'm, I'm not a big uh, crawfish person. How do you cook it? What is it like? Um, what, what's so special about crawfish? Oh, God, it's... Uh... <laughs> it's orgasmic, god it's, damn it. Yeah, I mean it's it's like a gift from the gods on high. So I'm very picky about my crawfish. So my family is from New Orleans, so I've grown up eating crawfish. And then I normally do a boil um every year. Um twenty twenty got canceled due to COVID, but I'm still gonna do one at some point this year. And so for me, it's all about the flavor that you have, you know, with the the right seasoning, um, mm-hmm. other things you put into it, whether it's your, you know, your garlic, your onions. Um, I like to throw in uh, orange wedges in mine because it's a sweeter citrus compared to a lemon. Um, and then once you let the crawfish boil, you let it kind of soak and just sit and just soak up all that flavor so it's nice and juicy. Some places soak they just kind of throw it in. They throw it in. They throw the seasoning on top. And so, you know, you, you got to suck the head and get all the juice out. So this place does a great job of it. Uh, then you have your sausage link. And, you know, I was by myself. I was sitting on the patio. And I had uh, Hulu playing. I was watching Into the Dragon, earbuds mm-hmm. in, and just killing some crawfish <laughs> and had a beer. And I'm like, you know, it doesn't get any better than this. You know, it was zone. just, I was in the zone just by myself and <laughs> watching Bruce Lee and just eating crawfish. I'm like, it just does not get any better than this. So it, it was a great, it was a great one. What about you? What made you smile this I- week? I can see you reliving that moment right now. You, it's 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 playing yeah. through your mind, and you're still smiling. Yeah. I, I see that. <laughs> yeah, mouth mouth just watering. I'm just like, mm, crawfish. <laughs> Soon as this mm. podcast over. <laughs> 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 well, for me, I um so quarantine has been a little different for me in the sense that it's been a blessing, right? Um, in in the sense that you know. Through most of the pregnancy, I was my, I was right there with my wife, and through the birth of our, our child, and through the first seven months of, of her being on this earth, I have been there every single day. Mm-hmm. And then this week, I'm on special assignment, so um, this week, I was gone for the first time, gone for was it three three days, right, mm-hmm. three four days. Um, when I came back in on Friday night, Friday evening, she was already gone to sleep. Um, but she woke up and I put her back to sleep great. But, she, you know, she was still in that haze. So she didn't really, you know, she's not really acknowledging everything that's happening. But mm-hmm. Saturday morning, when to walk in the room and see her and she sees me and she just lights up and starts kicking and jumping. And it's all the excitement around seeing me, mm-hmm. which is what I'm accustomed to seeing every morning. That literally made me just smile. Yeah. So I, I, the way you felt about your crawfish, um, <laughs> that's the kind of feeling I had. As you're describing that so, feeling you had sitting out on the patio with Bruce Lee and your earbuds on Hulu and you, you got that bear and you, you, you're you um, you know eating your crawfish, that's the kind of joy I felt as soon as I walked in the room, you know, and okay. it was on from there. So it was, just, it was great to see her smile that way. And part of that is because I did speak to her every day. Mm-hmm. But the attitude she gave me, <laughs> the fact that the seven-month-old has all this attitude on FaceTime and just ignoring the hell out of me for, um, for Blue's Clues and you, I was like, wait a minute. We're going to have some discussions when I get back. And, yeah. of course, as soon as I walk in the room, ah! I'm like, okay, well, never mind. So discussion's out the window. Let's go. <laughs> so good. So just so what I'm hearing is what it feels like to be a dad now and have a baby is equivalent to three pounds of crawfish, some sausage, Bruce Lee and a beer. So, so I can say I've experienced it a little bit. <laughs> I'm not touching that one at all. If that's what it's I'm like. Gonna I'm going to start having, I'm going to start having babies to date. If that's what it's like. Awesome. Hey, be careful. I think your doorbell's ringing right now because you just said that. <laughs> There are women lining up outside. Ding, ding. Hey, hey, I heard that. <laughs> I'm ready, sir. I've just been waiting. I've been waiting patiently for you to say this, Terrell. Let's do it. <laughs> you got a new house, new job. How about a new baby? 
Yeah. New family. <laughs> you need to fill up one of those rooms with a baby. <laughs> you know, this looks like a great room for a nursery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, politics as usual this week, man. I know it's it's been one of the big things that has um, everyone talking as the stimulus, the stimmy. Got people talking about Moneybag Joe and and Kamala Cash. <laughs> and, uh, or what they call him, Doe Biden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of the memes <laughs> on social media because he finally signed it in. So, um, so they can get stimulus checks. People starting to get stimulus checks this week. What's your thoughts on all that, man? So uh, I'm glad they got it. They got it all passed. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's some great things that they put in this bill, um, especially, you know, 123 billion uh, for COVID response. Um, and, and you heard him say in his speech the other day that, you know, by May, everybody should be able to have one. And they th- they're thinking mm-hmm. by July, we're going to go back to what normal was. Uh, very aggressive, uh, but good. You know, some of the other things they put in there was great. The stimulus checks is the only thing that I have a little, I feel a little different about. And um, the stimulus, it's, it's $1,400 for anybody that makes uh, up to 80000 or mm-hmm. a household that has uh, makes one twenty or one fifty. Um, I think if you've been making eighty thousand during this pandemic, you don't need a stimulus check. Right. Um, most of the people that were impacted that lost jobs aren't in that pay category right now. Even though they're still going to get one, but I would have put more towards that group. You know, let's say if you made under, I'd say even under fifty. You know, um, if you are. It, most cases, you know, you weren't furloughed or whatever, you know, but a lot of the the people who make less, you, you look at your frontline workers um, in the hospitality, retail servers that, that you don't like to tip because of shitty service. Um, all those other types of tip. folks. See, that, that's, that, here you go with your Republican. <laughs> no, I said, no, I said because of, you said, I said because no, of shitty said, service. I never said you I don't, don't like tip. to tip always, because of shitty service. No, no, I never said I don't tip. We're going to get back to this. We're going to get back okay. to this because I'm not going to let you tell these lies out here talking about I don't tip. See, you, you, you're turning to Fox News. You're turning to Tucker okay. Carlson over here. T- Tucker so, Terrell. Terrell Carlson. Re- re- retail workers. Um, just a lot of the frontline people, I think, are the ones that need that stimulus more. So, I mean, it's great mm-hmm. that it got out there. But I just think that if you've been making $80,000 this whole time and you just transitioned to work from home, you know, you've saved a lot of money on, you know, wardrobe, dry cleaning, gas, yep. you know, all that entertainment costs are going down. So you're not spending anything. I think they uh, went too high on who they gave a stimulus to. But other than that, I mean, I think it's, it's great. Um, we're getting things moving. We're, we're starting to see more shots, more vaccines coming available. So, you know, it's good. Everything else in the bill I thought was was good. Just I just wish that the stimulus they thought more about that stimulus package. I don't think anybody yeah. making eighty thousand dollars needs it. You know the problem, and here, here's the thing about it. I think it's trying to be, um, trying to be all things to all people, right? And that's the issue. You can't be all things to all people because you can't please everybody, regardless. Right. I mean, you have absolutely no problem not trying to please everybody. I have absolutely no problem not trying to please everybody. The hell with everybody. It's about here's who it is, and this is what it is, right? The difference mm-hmm. for politicians, they have to try and please everybody. And I think that's what happened with him is he didn't want to be seen as, oh, it's socialism giving those less fortunate more. But he should give them more because they're the ones that, like you said, were impacted the most. If you work in, in the service industry and even if even if your restaurant did not close, right, and you're still right. able to do takeout orders, then now your servers are not getting that because, right. I mean, and, and if so, it's less of them that are being able to come and take it to somebody um, in their car. And are they really getting tips then? And consider what you're paying them, which is not even close to minimum wage, um, what, what they pay servers, right? So therefore, they're impacted. They just, they need money because they've got bills. So it's like everybody else has bills, right? Um, mm-hmm. and like you said, if you've been affected and you've been working this, this entire time, but working remotely or even <clears throat> to this point of you had to take a pay cut because some of us had to take pay cuts, um, a percentage, no matter what that percentage was, whether it's 5, 10, 15, 20 percent, um, at the same point, and I get it because you lose some of that. I had to take a cut and it's not fun. But you know what? You didn't hear me complaining about it because I still kept my job. Not right. furloughed in that sense. And I think those are people that need the help the most. And so you're right. It shouldn't have to be all the way up to that. Because if you're making $150,000, un- unless your bills are $151,000, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether there was a, quarant- there was a-, there was a pandemic or not because yeah. you're probably going to still be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah. therefore, 
they don't need to bail you out there. So that's where I agree on that side. Um, I do think they should have given more because it could have been instead of 1400 2000 so that, yeah, I can cover these past bills and still be able to do this, you know, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and, yeah. No, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to agree with what you're saying. Yeah, I, what? I, I agree. Wait, you can agree less. with me. That's what I wanted to hear. Yes, go ahead, please. Go ahead. I do it once a month. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is on the vaccine, um, and it's funny because I heard um, like Angie Andrew on the Morning Hustle said the other day when um, he said, you know, by July 1st, we'll be back to having cookouts. She's like, wait a minute. I don't know if you want to tell black folks can have cookouts because you talk about at least 100 people at the cookout, you know? <laughs> yeah. You might want to tell them small gatherings, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was a, was a funny take on it. But it's, you know. I like the fact that he's given this kind of deadline. I just don't know that right now we're actually even going to make it there. And I say that mm -hmm. because, yes, the vaccines, it's a very aggressive that by May 1st, everyone does the vaccines. But I still think there's another spike coming because the spring break this week. Um, Florida is off the chain. South Padre yeah. Island, you know, is back like it was when we were in college and you didn't make it because you were busy flipping burgers at Sonic, making all that dough, you know, so I get it. But and I understand. You want to get out. You want to break out. I missed spring break last week. I got to go do it. I got to live my life. But there are people who are just not adhering to the rules at all and acting as if the no shirt, no shoes um, is fine, but no mask is, is an infringement on my uh, my rights. Come on, stop it. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're right. I mean, I think um, the process to try to get vaccines, it's challenging. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was lucky to get my first shot this week. And... Mm -hmm. Um, How was it? Is your arm still sore? Did you grow a third leg? No, 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 not at all. Uh, still got my tail and everything. So <laughs> <laughs> nothing's, nothing's falling off. Uh, but no, it wasn't. It wasn't a big deal. Um, I didn't feel any real big soreness, you know, like other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just wasn't that big a deal. But um, just trying to go online to try to get them. That's mm -hmm. what's difficult because you got to keep like refreshing a page and go here, go here. And the thing is, everybody has time to do that. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that part, that part will get a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you. I think we're, we're going to see a spike of some kind uh, before this May 1st deadline. And I'm hoping we don't have to go into another shutdown for a couple of weeks. But, um, exactly. you know, we'll, people are good to people. Right. And you're already starting to see people in Texas losing their shit because some businesses like in the city of Austin, you know, the governor lifted the, the mask mandate for the state of Texas. The city of Austin mm -hmm. said, yeah, we're still doing it. And, yeah. so, and so you got a lot of people who are upset. Luckily, I haven't seen any of that, but you just know what's going to happen. People are going to go off about wearing masks and all that. I'm like, it's just it's just stupid. Just wait. Get everybody vaccinated. We'll be fine. I'm already trying to plan like my crawfish boil. Like a lot of my friends, they've all got their first doses. And so by the time I want to have it, we have all had our second dose. So yeah. then it's like we feel comfortable bringing everybody and whether it's 10 people or 20 people that have all been vaccinated, you got to show me proof, but they've all been vaccinated. <laughs> I need your papers. I yeah. need your papers. <laughs> show me your papers. Um, yeah, <laughs> but they got to show me the paper. But I think that's kind of the goal is, is you can get back mm -hmm. to normal if you just, you know, play it safe. But I, I'm just glad more people are getting the shot. Um, highly encourage everybody to get vaccinated. Um, it's going to be something that's going to be mandated. It's, it, employers are going to make you have to do it. Uh, at some point in order for so, some people to do it yeah you're right yeah so just go ahead and get it done you can fight it all you want but you're gonna have to get it done you know the interesting thing especially i think now and i don't i think people are forgetting that there's this thing such thing as biological um assault right um so i think we're gonna see a spike in that just because those who are mad about it when they get mad they decide to get really loud really close in your face and try to purposely kind of spit on you or spray you well mm. I will just say this, and take this as fair warning to anybody. I'm never, I, I, you know, I don't um, answer hypothetical uh, questions or situations, but I'm sure there's guaranteed to be some sort of retaliation if you ever get in my face like that before this pandemic or even <laughs> after now, especially after now, because I don't like people in my face. I don't like people in my space. So, you know, if you're mad, like there's, there was this video of this woman um, who was in an Uber. And, you know, the driver just asked her to put on a mask and then they didn't want to put on the mask. So, all right, get out. They wouldn't get out. But they yelling, yelling, screaming all right up on him, invading his space, pulling his mask off. Right. That's assault. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, banned by Uber. 
<laughs> banned by Lyft, who was like, yeah, it didn't happen in the Lyft, but God damn it, it sure won't either. She's not allowed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You and your friend are no longer welcome on our, on our platform. And rightfully so, yeah. because you... And her idiotic um, reasoning for it was... Oh, well, you know, my boyfriend told me, my boyfriend taught me that this, wait, first of all, why is your boyfriend teaching you how to be a woman? <laughs> That's something your parents should have done, right? But my boyfriend taught me, don't let anybody tell you what to do. Oh, Jesus. Yo, we got to stop this nonsense, man. But I want to get back really and truly to, to you and the vaccine because you're, you're the, you're probably the third or fourth person that I've, I know that has gotten it. Mm -hmm. And the process of, of getting it. So did you get to choose which one you, you got? And, and what, how long was it when you, when you got, you said you didn't have the lasting soreness, but what was the experience like? Sure. So, um, in there's a city of Austin page that, uh, you go to, to, to register to see if you qualify. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I registered and, um, I qualified and I don't even know, what justified me qualifying? I think because, you know, I, I used to be a smoker or my dad died of cancer, so I have history. Um, but I was eligible. And then you try to go in the site and try to register, and I couldn't. And um, someone had sent me a, a, a link to um, a, a, a place in Colleen, which is about an hour from me, that mm -hmm. um, had appointments available. Just like went on, I just booked the appointment. Um, he sent it to me Sunday. I made an appointment for Friday. Uh, I'm nice. like, perfect. And so I, I drive out there and what it was, it was a actual, it was a church. And so they set up like this vaccine clinic within mm -hmm. this uh, church kind of, you know, gymnasium deal and process pretty smooth. I walked in, do you have a resident, you know, do you have an appointment? Yep. They saw my appointment, told me to go here. They gave me this clipboard to fill out some stuff and then you sit and wait. And so I waited probably, I got there about 10 till noon and they called me in about 1230. Um, they sit down, explain, and they, you don't get a chance to pick what shot you want. Um, okay. It's kind of whatever they have. I'll have and that so, one, please. Yeah. It's like, you know, do you want the <laughs> Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson Johnson one dose? Um, so I, I, I got the, I didn't get the pick. It was just what they had. So they gave me the Pfizer. Um, and then they said, hey, but, you know, most people have, you know, these kind of symptoms. It's totally natural. Uh, which arm do you want it in after your shot? You have to sit over there for 15 minutes before they let you leave to see if you have any allergic reaction to it. So, you know, pulled up my sleeve, boop, you know, do the shot in there. And you have any questions like, nope. And uh, then they give you the link to register for your second dose and you have to keep your card. That's the other thing that's important. Your first dose, you get a card that shows your that you've taken the first dose and signed off. If you show up to your second dose appointment without this, without they're sending the card, people yeah. away. Yeah. Right. So you got to have that with you. And your second dose might not be at the same location where you got the oh, first wow. dose. So okay. you got to pay attention. You got to pay attention to that. The devil's in the details. Yeah. But other than that, it was totally smooth. When I got home, um, yeah, I felt totally fine. And when I woke up yesterday, um, no different than whenever you get a flu shot. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing, you know, I can't say my arm hurt. Nothing. So no. I'm one of the lucky ones, I guess, you know, knock on wood, that yeah. uh, I didn't have anything. But I hear the second dose is where people see most of the symptoms. So yeah. we'll see. I'm just happy to have gotten it, gotten it done. Well, you know, what qualified you for um, for this was because you're probably the first black man in the state of Texas to go get his uh, vaccine. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I ain't taking that shit. <laughs> no, <I'm, laughs> and and now that I'm on special assignment, I definitely need to you know try and get mine myself, too. So, uh, you know, uh, to each his own as to who uh, you can't force people to do it. And even, you know, I don't think they can make it where employees force people to do it. They can say you can't come into the building until such such time. Um they can require it in that manner, but it'll be interesting to see how this how this plays out as we move forward. Yeah. And can we get to um, herd immunity? So, yeah, I, I do want to go back to your to your bullshit statement on um, tipping, though. Um, you know, af after that empowering speech and this great, you know, <laughs> motivational of why you did it and you know, great thing. I want to get back to this bullshit you're talking about, saying that I I, I don't tip if the service is shitty. What I said last week was I do tip. It's just a lesser amount. Now you have you have your cap on the minimum that you would tip, which is great, mm -hmm. and I'm fine with your your minimum, right? And now my minimum would be 10 percent because if you give me bad service or shitty service at, at that point, and depending on how shitty that service is or how bad that service is, yes, I'm mm -hmm. going to lower what I'm going to give you. There's no way I give you the the full amount I was going to give you if the service is garbage. Mm -hmm. Just like you're not going to give them 30 percent because the service was bad. Yours, yours is 20. And I'm not knocking you for your 20 because 
You've worked in the service industry. As a matter of fact, as evidenced by that by that uh, that thing you sent me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I love that thing that I sent you. I thought it was hilarious because it's it's so true. If you never worked in the restaurant industry, mm-hmm. um, you could totally tell. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> um, and not just on the tipping. It, it's just some of the mm-hmm. other things. You know, oh, yeah. if someone if someone says something is eighty six, and somebody doesn't say hurt. Because normally in the kitchen, someone's like, hey, 86 ribeyes. And as you're walking by, you're like, hurt. That way, you know not to order that uh, mm-hmm. and tell the customers that. So 86, um, that means we're out of, out of ribeyes. Yep, we're, okay. we're out of it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. 86 that, we're out of it. Um, mm-hmm. If somebody yells like behind or corner. So when you're carrying food, if you go around the corner, you always yell corner. That mm-hmm. way, if someone else is coming around the corner, they hear you. No. Or if they're standing in front of you, you say behind you. And mm-hmm. that way, they know that you're coming right behind them with mm-hmm. food. And so it's just something you automatically do. I've even, it's been years since I worked in a restaurant, but there's still times I catch myself potentially doing it. Um, yeah. They ask what time you get off work and they don't understand why you don't know an exact time because it's so true. <laughs> so it's like, as a manager, I'm like, I'm working volume. So what time are you getting off? Um, volume. Well, what does that mean? Well, when the volume slows down and everything yeah. is good enough that I can go, sometimes that could be eight o'clock at night. Sometimes that could be nine thirty. 10 o'clock that's just oh. inconsiderate people who just don't understand that, that you know you don't you, you don't work a nine to five you work a yeah. nine to five ish you know yeah <laughs> yeah even if you're waiting tables like if you're normally done at four but mm-hmm. shit could happen where you're there till five five thirty so if, if you're, in that industry it's never, coming, yeah yeah that no matter what position you work in that industry it's never a, a set you know guaranteed time um this other one they point out and i totally um I don't do this at all because because of the years I did it. Um, another way you can tell someone's never worked in the restaurant industry is they leave their plates, forks, napkins, cups, unstacked all over the table instead of stacking them neatly together and placing them on the edge. So when I'm That's eating, I, I totally do. I grab my table, I grab the plate, yep. <laughs> I'll help stack plates. I put stuff up and just set it. That way, it's easier for the server, the buster, just to come grab it and go. I've um, seen people we used do to that. Call, we used to call that. We used to call that pre-bussing. Right. Yeah. Um, you're, you're pre-busting a table before the customers leave. That way it's less stuff to do when they do get up and it's a faster turnaround where you can hurry yeah. and wipe it down, seat it um, and do a faster table turn. Um, so I still do that no matter where I go. I neatly stack up my stuff. I've seen that. I've seen people do that. And I, I, I get the reasoning behind it. But you're right. If you don't work in the industry of never of never worked in the industry, then that's not something that even crosses your mind to do. You just you, you yep. put it, you kind of push it everything to the middle of the table away from you. <laughs> the person who's working is like, now nah, grab, 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 blap, and put it all over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. Um, that's funny, though, but it's true. <laughs> um, another one um, to know someone's never worked in the restaurant industry. They've never cried or screamed fuck real quick and the walk in and then walk back out like nothing happened so the walk-in is the walking cooler and so when you're stressed and you just need to yell many times you go in there and you just scream get that cuss out and then come right back out start talking to tables and put your happy face on um that if anyone's ever done that they've worked in the restaurant industry well not not just the restaurant industry because we have if you do it i mean in radio they always tell you no matter what's going on in your life when you walk through that door leave your shit at the door because nobody else gives a shit about what, you, what your problems are. I don't want, I, I, if, especially if you're doing morning radio, don't come mm-hmm. in because you're sleepy and, oh, uh, I guess we have to do this this morning. Because everybody else who's getting up, they don't want to hear that shit. Mm-hmm. Give me some shit. Give me some energy. Let's roll. And that's what it is. So I totally get that. That's, that's not just an in, a restaurant yeah. industry thing. But I, I love that because you do have to put your game face on regardless. And it's no matter whether you feel like it or not, customers there, all right, let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you the days that, that, that there's there's three days in the restaurant industry for me that always sucked. Mm-hmm. And at some point, I'm going to drop an F-bomb and yell. And you might be surprised on these three days. Mother's Day, because it is mm-hmm. so crazy busy and annoying. Mm-hmm. Valentine's Day, everybody wants to ball <laughs> out at a freaking Applebee's and like think that they're treating their lady to something special. And then Sundays. Sunday church crowds? Assholes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, Sunday church crowds are assholes, oh. man. I don't know what what they got preached to, but they are just rude, uh, very demanding people. You know, it's just crazy uh, dealing with Sunday morning church crowds. I, I just hated that group. Hated working Sunday mornings to deal with that Sunday I, morning church crowd. I will tell you that neither of those three surprised me. Um, mm-hmm. Mother's Day, because you know it's it's again hectic. Everybody's got to take mom out to eat, um, and then 
people it, on special days people just get in that crazy man like you said valentine's day is the ball out and want it all and why is it not this and you got to show up because again it's, it's those special days you're trying to show up for for this other person that's there and then yeah of course like you said that's the church crowd man they, they <laughs> well I, the lord has already forgiven me for my sins so it's time to restart <laughs> start fresh <laughs> <laughs> i'm on the control alt delete let's go <laughs> yeah they are just some of the rudest rudest people they're always in a large group um, and I told you, I don't like eating eating in, in groups, large groups, when I go out to eat, to restaurant. Mm, but yeah. they're in a large group, and there's always at least going to be one that's going to be the biggest ass of them all. Um, so, yeah, I hate that one. And then the very last thing they had on this deal, how to know someone's never worked in a restaurant, they don't automatically tip 20% despite how terrible the waitress was. And hmm. and that's where we I, I agree with you on everything else until we get to that point, because <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not going to get 20% if the service is bad. If the service is shitty, you're not going to get the 20%. And that's just me. And you can tell me I'm wrong, and that's fine. That's because you've worked in the industry, and that's great. But just because you've worked in the industry um, doesn't mean that you should have to pay somebody for not doing their job the right way. Because you, of all people, know what they could be doing better or should be doing better. or And you can, you can tell when it's not just the fact that, um, oh, they're busy, right? And because, again, I, I can tell when somebody's busy and they got a lot going on. Um, you can tell when somebody's just not being attentive at all. Um, but if it's just there are different things that people do. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's because they think, OK, well, this is a black person. They're not going to tip. So I'm just going to give them half ass service. And I can't tell you why somebody's going to do it. I can tell you that when I get half ass service, I know it's half ass service. And I go, OK. I, other than that, I tip well, but I always tip. And that's the key thing. I always tip. And I think I remember you just telling me that you did something the other day and didn't tip. And you got service. Yeah. I went to the liquor store mm-hmm. and uh, was paying with a credit card. And mm-hmm. the slip had a section for me to tip. And I'm like, why would I tip? So 20% at the God liquor damn store. It. 20%. Why would I tip at the liquor store? No, 20%. why would I tip at the liquor store? He didn't do anything. <laughs> I walked in. I got all the stuff I wanted. I carried it to the counter. He rang it up, put it in a bag. I carried that bag to my car. <laughs> But if I pulled up in front of the liquor store, he runs out to my car and says, hey, you look like Terrell. What can I get for you, sir? And I'm like, hey, well, I want to get some whiskeys. Well, we got this selection. I'm going to run and go get them for you. And have you ever tried this whiskey? It's really delicious. I'm going to bring you a sample. <laughs> yeah. If they'd have done all that. And then he comes out there in a bag, puts it in the back seat of my car, hands the little you know, hand device to run my credit card. I would have left a tip for that. But I'm talking like tipped. When I, t- when I talk about always leaving a tip, it's restaurant. You yeah, know, I restaurants, know. bars, always leave a tip for that. <laughs> but I thought that was odd that there's a section leave a tip at the liquor store. I'm like, you, you didn't okay, do anything. So it's not you didn't even me. upsell me. No. The, the only the, So I would agree with you. The only time I don't tip is in situations like that when it's like, why is yeah. there a tip line on here? And you just, and I purposely put the zero in that shit. Nope. Because you're right. I, I went and did everything. But a couple people I take care of very well. I always have, which is bartenders. Because um, you take care of your bartender, they remember that, right? You take mm-hmm. care of your waitress because, and, and or your server. Let's not be sexist here. Take care of your server because that person re- will remember that kind of stuff. And at the same time, you always want to make sure who's ever, hand- who's ever handling your food is good. Whoever's handling your drinks is good. And they, they understand where you are. So that's why I always tip. Now, if you are shitty in what you do, I'm sorry. You're not going to get the full amount of the tip that I want to give you, but you're still going to get a tip because I understand you're not making. And there are a lot of people who don't tip mm-hmm. completely. And I know that black, white, whatever. Or indifferent. Yep. I know there are a lot of people who don't tip. I'm not one of those people who don't tip because I just I get it. I understand. I've never worked in the industry, but I understand you don't get paid the uh, not even minimum wage. But I also know there's a lot of money to be made. And that's the, the thing that some people used to go. Well, I'm, why would I tip them a whole lot? Because they're going to make this anyway. Don't count other people's pocket. I hate when people do that. Just if the service is good, give the tip. You know what I mean? Um, and even if the service is bad, leave a tip. Now, that tip may be a dollar. <laughs> it may be 10%. <laughs> but yeah. It's not going to be the 15 where I start. Again, I start I start here and let's move up or let's move down. Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. And I think during this, during this pandemic with, with all the different things that got shut down, mm-hmm. people have more disposable income in a sense that you're not spending so many other places. So when the when we had the first lockdown, we we're doing to go only. You know, I would like if my bill was eighteen dollars. You know, I tipped eighteen dollars. I mm-hmm. called it tip the sh- tip tip the tab, oh, right? Wow. Um, because those people are 
that you, to your point, you know, when you're working to go, they're just sitting there working for tips if yeah. they get anything. True. And so I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm not going anywhere else. I'm not doing anything else. How great would it be to help bless this person and, and be able to help them? That was my mindset when I started doing tip the tab um, to a lot of places. And then even if I, you know, bartenders, especially, I definitely take care of them um, mm-hmm. when I go out places. Um, you know, it just really depends. I, I think it's just great to do. But right now, especially since a lot of these people are impacted the most, um, if I have if I have the extra money, yeah, I'm going to give you 25% or something. You did a great job, but also I know you haven't had to work in months because yep. the restaurant was closed. So here's an extra on top of that 20%. Uh, and even if the service is kind of average or, or poor, I still will give 20% because I just do that. I you don't have to. Have, yeah, you I've, don't I've, have to. I have honestly never tipped as high as you have because I've never given – you know, tip the tip the check, I, but I get it, and it's the same thing in looking at delivery drivers. When I think, when I really thought about this a lot, was when um, you know, you get, I used to order Domino's quite a bit um, in Charleston, right? And I'd go, "There's a delivery fee," and you had to really go, "Wait a minute, is that delivery fee for the company or does?" And I remember I asked the driver once, "Do you guys get the delivery fee?" He goes, "No, man here," <laughs> you know. And and what was always good to me was when they would come and they would get, and you tip them, and they go, "Oh, well, well, well thank you," you know. And, like they were surprised to get a tip. Like, no, I'm I'm gonna tip you. No, no, don't spit on my pizza next time, motherfucker. <laughs> well, but the other thing is that those delivery services they talk, yeah. right? So yeah. just like you know, you rate your Uber driver. Uber drivers yeah. rate you as well. And so oh, okay. same as these delivery services. Mm-hmm. And so I like to know if my name pops up for delivery, and yeah. maybe somebody put in the comments, "Hey, he's a big tipper." Awesome. Yeah. That way they already know. I'm they're they're, they're gonna get a good. They're going to get a good tip from me. I want to deliver the uh, town. No, I want to deliver the yeah. town. <laughs> yeah. Let them fight over it, but they'll know. Because compared to if they're like, hey, this guy never tips, they're going to be like, well, shit. And sometimes they maybe decline it or they're just going to yeah. half-ass because they know no matter what they do, you're not tipping. So who exactly. cares? No, that's facts. You know, we got um an, an email in, in the mailbag from uh, your good friend, CJ. CJ! Um, as we as we get into for the love of sports, uh, he says, hoping you guys discuss the Myers Leonard situation at some point um, this week. Um, here's my question: Is stupidity ever an acceptable excuse for an adult? Not speaking of literacy or ignorance or of meaning. I'm speaking of the stupidity it takes to use a word, a word that is, by the way, spoken with fever, veracity, tone, and ease, and apparently have no idea, quote unquote, what it means on a Twitch live stream. Oh yeah, then wait 24-ish hours to apologize, only after public uproar with a weak ass excuse. Um, you kind of were filling me in on this Myers Leonard um, situation because yep. I, I miss I miss this one. Um, filling everyone else who, who's not who's not aware of it. Yeah, so Myers Leonard is a player. Um, he's a center for the Miami Heat, mm-hmm. and apparently he was playing a um, video game. And I don't play video games, so I don't know how this works and how you know how he even got caught, but. You know, he probably has the headset and you're talking to the people. People are recording it. And um, so let me, I'll put you in right here. I, I feel, so he's on a live a Twitch live stream. Right. So what happens is you're playing the game. You have the headsets on so you can talk to the other person. But if you're streaming it, then also anybody can watch. So if you have a, if oh. you're on Twitch, you can go watch. So people are just watching. So you could have a uh, hundred people, a thousand people, 10,000 people, 100,000 people watching this game happen. Um, and so that's that's where this happened. And whatever you're saying on the microphone that's feeding through the live stream is there. They can hear the conversation between both people. So that's where we are. Go ahead. Okay. Why would anybody want to do that? I don't know. But um... <laughs> <laughs> you, you just seem so confused. I've explained that. Like, uh, so you want? Why would you want to do you play? <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, hey, hey, Yanni, I'm gonna play you in a game. Well, let's live stream and let anyone in the world just be able to jump in and watch us. Like yes. it's just weird, that, and that's weird. that's ex- that's ex- you understand it perfectly well. See, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just weird. It's just weird. Um, but so in the video that he's playing this game, uh, he can be heard saying, "Effing cowards! Don't effing snipe me, you effing b-word." Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, "Hey, who says that anymore?" But then mm-hmm. why the hell would you say that? And that just took off. Um, so he got fined fifty thousand dollars and suspended uh, from the team's facilities and banned from team activities for a week for the anti-Semitic uh, slur. Um, and he's got a lot of you know pushback. I mean, I think um, Edelman wrote him a letter 
saying, hey, you know, help me understand, let me help you understand why this is offensive. Uh, yeah. But I'm in Miami all the time. If you want to get together, I'd love to take you for, I think it's Shabbat, you know, dinner. Yeah. And because I'll show you a really good time. Um, so that's what happened with there. So uh, stupidity, um, you know, why he why he said it. I wouldn't accept his apology either because that goes back to my comment about the apology tour. <laughs> you only you're only saying it because people got you upset. Got caught. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got caught, you know, but it, the thing about it is you can't say you had no idea what it meant or that it was offensive when you use like if the offensive part was bitch. You still can't say, "Well, I didn't know that" because you said it trying to be offensive. Right. You said it in a manner to piss people off, piss yep. the guy you were talking to off, or the girl, whoever was. I'm assuming or it was the guy. kid, whatever. You know. Yeah. And, and it and and granted, kids say the stupidest shit on these goddamn games, and you just get. That's why when so I'll jump on Madden and play random people. I purposely don't plug in my headphones because I'm not gonna sit down here and be yelling at, 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 at people I have no idea who they are. Right. So <laughs> they can talk all the shit they want. I can't hear them anyway. I don't care what they say. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so they, they can be out there cussing me out. I, I, I have no idea. Say all the things you want. But you can't use that as an excuse. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that was offensive. You knew because you said it in that manner. And if you know how to use it properly, it's like when they say, oh, kids, kids, uh, a, a, a baby who, who curses, they use it in the right way because they've watched you do it. So mm. they know how to use it in the right, in the right manner. And you as an adult, if you use it in the right manner, and I say the right manner in, in the offensive manner that you wanted to use it in, you can't say, you can't, um, you know, claim stupidity or, or ignorance. You can't. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I didn't know that I was supposed to put the ball through the hoop. It was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, I, I just don't think you can just claim ignorance. He knew what it, he knows what it means. He knew what he was doing and just leave it at that. So if. The Miami Heat organization, it's okay to forgive. Um, great. You know, more part to him. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I just think it was dumb on his part. And uh-huh. we all know in, in the in the, in the the world of the media and entertainment, there's just certain groups you just don't fuck with. <laughs> and and consequences and repercussions as a, when you do. <laughs> as a as a whole, because you're looking at, um, you know, you're talking about in any actual, um, in, in, in any – industry because you're talking about this is sports right Mm -hmm. this is a a live stream and whether it's in news media there's certain things you can't do in entertainment media you can't do it Uh, in the movies you can't in sports you can't it doesn't matter what you do in hr you can't because if you say what he said you will get canceled really quick and 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 you're right there are certain groups that uh that are so strong in what they do and in their unity and this mm-hmm. is where I have the biggest issue and how divided we are as a people because if we are as strong as, as some of these other groups and as united as there's so much that could change because there's so many things we've seen change over time where people yeah. know, yeah, we'll insult anybody else, but we are not going to insult this group, this group, this group, or this group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know better. <laughs> We'll talk shit about any president there is, but we'll never talk about this person. Yeah, <laughs> not this person. Off limits, always. Exactly. And on that note, we're going to skip right past this subject real quick. <laughs> no, for, <laughs> CJ, appreciate the, appreciate the question, man. You know, a, a perfect example of, of what we were just talking about with certain groups. You know who to, who to insult and who not to is this um, high school basketball announcer, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... I saw this on TMZ, and he is, he's about to go, it's the national anthem, boom, he goes to the national anthem. So the sound is supposed to go, his mics are supposed to be off. Him and his co-announcer, mic's supposed to be off, they aren't. And this is what mm-hmm. I always say, whenever there's a microphone in front of you, and you're not the one behind the board controlling it, then you need to think it's always live, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> when I used to do remotes and we had a microphone there, if I wanted to talk, I'm unplugging it because I wanted to make sure that that person in the studio didn't accidentally put me over the air. I've never wanted right. that. Um, not that I was saying anything bad. I just don't want random conversations over there. 
Well, that's what happened with this guy. The national anthem was playing, and he goes, oh, my God, are they kneeling? Because the girls' basketball team was kneeling for the national anthem. Mm-hmm. And then the opposing team, off. right? Yeah. And he's like, oh, my God, are they kneeling? Fucking. And, and then continues the conversation. And then comes yeah. back like it's nothing because he has no idea that that happened. Now, when yeah. it finally comes to light that, oh, yeah, by the way, this went, over, this went out over the air and this is what it is. He goes, OK, well, yes, that was me. But, you know, I have diabetes. So when my sugar spiking, sometimes anything's liable to come. <laughs> and I'm laughing, not because it's funny, but because I can't believe you just blamed your racism on diabetes. <laughs> I I laughed. I, I I wasn't offended. I laughed more when I saw this story because I'm like, so you're telling me low blood sugar, you know, turns on your racism, you know? Yes. And that's what I'm gonna start assuming now. Anytime I come across somebody who says something racist or whatever, I'd be like, hey man, eat a Snickers. Your racism is showing. <laughs> <laughs> Drink some orange juice. I think your racism is starting to come out, you know. But that's just the craziest excuse I've ever heard. He he kept trying to say, well, I'm I'm not trying to make that an excuse. You know, it doesn't you know, excuse what I did. I'm like, yes, you are trying to make that excuse. I can't yes. believe that's where you went. I can't believe that's where you went. I've known a lot of people with low blood sugar and have diet that are diabetics. Me Not too. one of them said when their sugar is low, they all of a sudden become either racist, sexist, something, nothing. I'm like, that was just the crazy excuse. Now, the mm. other thing I thought more about after I got done laughing for like an hour about mm. that whole excuse he gave is the guy sitting next to him didn't say anything. Mm hmm. And what I mean by that, that to me, he co-signed on it. You not, see what I'm well, saying? I, don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even go to co-sign. I would say he, that's not the first time he's heard him say that. Yeah. It's say? just like, no, it's come like, it's on, okay. guy, don't say that. But because he's heard him say it. So, yeah, he, he excused it. He's, he's yep. fine with that. Uh, be, but because there are things that people have said, and I go, look, yo, don't, don't say that. If you're not comfortable with it, you can tell people not to say that. And yeah. so you're right. Is he co- does he co-sign? I don't think it's a co-sign. So this is where you and I would disagree on that part. But I will say he's, that's not the first time he's heard it because he wasn't shocked because he didn't go, oh, my God, dude. <laughs> but the fact, that the, the fact that he didn't stop him, to me, that's a co-sign. Because even if you've okay. heard him say it before, mm-hmm. right, if, if I'm out with you and I hear you say something you know, derogatory about anybody and I'm like, hey, man, it's not cool. It's only going to be next time you. you do what it, are you talking about? The next time you do it, I'm going to be like, hey, that's not cool, man. I keep telling you. <laughs> That's not cool. So every time you did it, I would keep Again, saying it. Again, it'll only be about you. I know, and it's not cool. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. It's only about you. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's not cool. Don't talk about me like that. <laughs> um, so <laughs> to, to me, uh, I feel like he's co-signing on because he's just letting it go. Whether yeah. he agrees with him or not, he didn't speak up and say anything. Uh, yeah. And I think that was bad. And so now I think that group, they've been, um, they are like a third party vendor that does the announcing. The school has said they're not going to use them anymore the rest of the year as they do an investigation. I'm like, what do you need to investigate? There's a recording. There's nothing to investigate. Said. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what the investigation is going to entail, but whatever. But um, <laughs> shame on that dude. And, and again, diabetes, the sugar. Now, now if your what, friend Reggie Mantle called him a racist, I'd be like, yeah, I, I, I might be inclined to agree with you on this one. <laughs> <laughs> There's proof in the pudding there. I'm not, I'm not understanding. I, mean, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> oh, something else I can't understand, man, is um, what's going on with these teachers uh, as we get into this bullshit. Oh my God, what? I mean, even though this, every this, that uh, high school announcer could have been a um, some bullshit too, but <laughs> what's going every on every week? Every week, there's something going on with teachers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so this week, um, it's a teacher in Arkansas. Um. Part of me is like, well, North Little Rock, what do you expect? But um, this teacher... (laughs) People say that about uh, Texas, too. I'm just saying, Ted Cruz. Yeah, very true. So this teacher's name's Carla Lassiter. Um, She had, uh, and I guess for the story, I have to say she's white. Mm. Uh, Although when I said Little Rock, Arkansas, I think that says that. But um, (laughs) she's white. And uh, she had a five-year-old little black boy that Mm -hmm. apparently either he used too much toilet paper or something in the toilet. And so she was trying to teach him a lesson about clogging the toilet. So she made him stick his hand in the toilet and pull out his own feces. And so the kid, of course, tells the mom. The mom is like, are you shitting me? She's pissed. 
Literally. The teacher admits that yeah, I had her do. I had him do it. I don't. I don't know why. I was trying to teach him a lesson about clogging up the toilet, and so now this <laughs> teacher's you know suspended, on leave, um, and the whole deal. There's an investigation going on, and and yada yada yada. Um, and apparently, this teacher is, is like well decorated teacher. You know, it's I don't know what happened. Did she just snap, or is it maybe just something with this kid that she just can't stand him? But why would any teacher make any kid, especially a five year old? Do something like that. There is it no just answer. Blows my to that. mind. <clears throat> There's yeah. absolutely no answer to that question. And if they ask, the only thing she could say when they said, "Why'd you do this?" Like, I have no idea. Because what are you gonna say? Um, the only yeah. real answer give, well, because he's black and I'm white. And we'd go, well, why that still? I mean, again, there's there's no right answer. Oh, because I don't like him. Why? He's a kid. He's a five year old kid. Oh, he gets on my damn nerves. Again, it's a five year old. It, there's no answer she could give that is going to satisfy the mother, right. the principal, or anybody in the community. And it, I, I don't care mm-hmm. about the color in this one. All right. Um, and I say that just because it, it's, it doesn't matter. A teacher, an adult, did this with a five year old yep. child, regardless. Now, we don't know, so we're not going to suppose or, or insinuate that race had anything to do with it. I'm just going to say mm-hmm. that as an adult, to do that, Anything that 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 parent did to that teacher when they came to that school was justified, <laughs> regardless. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm never for the fact yeah. when parents come to the school and are mad at, at teachers because they they punish their child for this or that or the other. This though, I don't care what that that parent did to that yeah. child because I can't answer the question. If you were to say, Yanni, what would you do in this situation? I'd go, first of all, I don't answer hypothetical questions. Um, <laughs> but second of all, I'll go, I don't know what I would do in this case. I mean, seriously? Yeah. Is that something you would do your, yeah. to your own child? Is uh, something? I, how would you react if somebody did it to her child? You know, it's, I have no words for this. I, except I don't, I don't understand either. I don't understand either. Yeah, I don't understand either. And I don't want to assume race played an issue mm-hmm. into it the way the, the exactly. article is posted obviously white teacher does this to black student but yeah my thing is what teacher does that to any student even if it was a white teacher to a white student yeah. i would still be talking about it on this podcast because that is just if it was a my black mind. teacher to a white know, student we'd be having this you know, conversation with, too yeah definitely would and i don't i don't know maybe i have no idea why there's a whole lot of teacher things going on uh lately you know is it because of the working from home model and the Zoom classrooms, I have no idea, but shit, teachers, some teachers are losing it. But this story, yeah. I just don't understand what would make her even do that, period, to anybody, right? I don't know, does she snap? I mean, they're doing in-person classes, apparently. So she don't like come to his house and make him stick his hand in his own toilet. You know, so they're doing right. in-person classes. So it, maybe things are a little back to normal there, but I just don't understand what would cause her to do that. But that just blew my mind this week. Some serious I bullshit. I will say for this it week. is some serious bullshit. And I will say this though: the good thing, if is if there's a glass half full in this, all the other teachers should be like, "All right, so look, here's why we need a raise. One, we're not going to masturbate in front of the class. Two, if it's a virtual <laughs> class, we're not going to stand up and jack off in front of the class. And three, we're not going to make your child reach into the toilet to prove that you're not supposed to pl- uh, to put too much toilet paper in there and take their own feces out. So therefore, we deserve a raise because this is the level of bullshit you get when you only pay nine ninety nine an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe this maybe this is a way that teachers can get what they just do in educating our kids because at the end of the day. We don't need any more of these bullshit ass stories coming out uh, with teachers and students, man. This is this is crazy. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and it really and truly needs to stop. No more of this bullshit. Just like the bullshit around Meghan and Harry. Um, yeah, you know, th- it's a week ago they sat down with Oprah. Well, a week ago it aired. They sat right. down with Oprah, um, and a lot of things came out of that. Um, you know, whether it was getting down to you know, the fact that somebody in the royal family thought um, was questioning how dark the baby would be. Um, and we can go through all that, but the thing I really want to cover, especially in this bullshit, because we can say that's bullshit, but, I mean, it's the royal family. And it's, right. if you go back and look, and I'm, I, I love medieval stuff. I love medieval history. I go back and look through a lot of that stuff. Um, so that's not going to surprise me. Mm-hmm. What kind of surprised me was the reason why 
Piers Morgan, or what appears to be the reason why Piers Morgan has had it out for Meghan Markle for a long time, since her and Prince Harry got together. Mm -hmm. Piers Morgan has had something to say about it. And apparently, (laughs) as this resurfaced, he was on um, The Late Late Show speaking about how he met her for the first time. They sat down in a pub and they had they had drinks. She was on um, a press tour for um, Suits. Mm-hmm. Well, he puts her in a cab and that cab took her to the party where she met Prince Harry. Then the next night she had a one-on-one dinner with Prince Harry and Piers Morgan hasn't heard from her since. So basically she goes to them after, you know, um, but it's not like they were dating. Right. She wasn't dating Piers Morgan. They met once. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. And it seems that he's had a vendetta out for her since then because she ignored him. And he's like, oh, well, she reached the status she wanted. So she no longer has use for us. And she doesn't know you. Yeah. What are you mad about? You are the better never been. Not even the better ex-boyfriend. You're the better never been. Yeah. If is this what women go through all the time with, with, with guys who are insecure men? Jesus Christ. I'm, sh- I'm sure. I'm sure they can all tell a bunch of stories of, of very similar similar deals. But yeah, Pierce Morgan is just, you know, I, I think one thing you just don't do is you don't want to say that someone's lying about how they feel because that's their feelings. You know, mm-hmm. you, you can't speak to that. I think that's um, the problem that he had when he was trying to say that he doesn't believe that she was suicidal and he doesn't believe that anybody that she went to within the institution didn't try to offer her help. He's just calling her story bullshit, which I just think it's it's, it's very um, insensitive to do right. something like that. And honestly, it's stupid. You know, you can't say, "Oh no, what your feeling is wrong," and you didn't think about suicide. Shut up. <laughs> right. You know, I, I think that's I think that's crazy. Um, and then I don't know if you watched the deal with the talk with um, uh, Sharon Osbourne, where. She was asked, you know, why does she still, why is she still kind of friends with Piers Morgan if your friend is racist? And it wound up being this, this whole big deal, and they're doing an investigation on that. And Piers Morgan wants CBS to apologize to him and to Sharon Osbourne. And it's this whole big now I'm the victim kind of mentality. So it's a crazy, it's a crazy story. Piers Morgan has always been someone of a shock and awe kind yeah. of person. Uh, he, he's a British version of a Rush Limbaugh. Exactly. You know, um, and he just kind of says a lot of stuff just for noise mm-hmm. um, and clickbait. So I think apparently he's stepping away from his show and uh, don't know what he's going to do next. I'm sure he's going to do something. <laughs> but, yeah, I just thought it was ridiculous. I watched the interview and uh, it, it was interesting to hear just all that stuff about, you know, what color, how dark will the baby be, all these different things. And, you know. Kudos to Megan for admitting the fact that she w- she went into this whole thing very naive. She didn't like look up Prince Harry, didn't look up the royal family. I mean, I do that. If I'm going to go on a date with you for the first time, I'm going to look you up. I'm going to find some stuff on Facebook. I'm going to do some searches. She didn't do any of that. And so well, she I, just I, felt really naive about everything. But And I think Harry yeah. should have told her a little bit more like, hey, here's what's going to happen. If we're going to date, this is what it's going to look like. Have. Are you sure you're in? But are you – do you – I mean – she may not have researched in detail, and maybe that's what she really means in that sense of, of in detail. What is it? What do you? What are the? Um, what are the procedures? And what do you have to do? What 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 are, what are the what are the things you have to do? How, how do you curtsy for the queen? What do you have to do when you're in her presence? Like people didn't tell them you can't stand next to the queen, especially you know. There's certain things you can't do, um, but she knew. The, the world is out there, and the fact that I, I'm, I'm sure she knew enough about about them, but just not about what you have to do around them, right? Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot. There's And there, you're right. He should have definitely prepared her for a lot of that because if you're going to go, somebody's coming to meet your mom, and your mom is very particular about certain things, you're going to be like, all right, well, uh, take those booty shorts off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I ain't going to hear the end of this if you do that, <laughs> you know? But, yeah, um, yeah. At, at, at the same time, I think even, even with... Um, there are a lot of people online and on social media, the Twitter, um, the Twitter thugs, who are like, "Oh well, what do you mean? She's she was as, as a young girl, she liked to, she always wanted to be a princess. What young girl hasn't wanted to be a princess? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's 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 but not in the literal sense because you don't think you can be right, right? Um, but at the same time, it's you're stepping into a world that's very different and. It's probably a very outdated world, as a lot of people are saying now, um, and, and the procedures that they do, but it, it is their world. 
and you're stepping into that. Um, does that mean that she should just accept anything that comes her way? No, because the world is changing as a whole. Um, if, if, if these are the kind of things that are being said, first of all, don't be surprised <laughs> because um, that's the way it is. It's like I'm not surprised that her dad is now going, yeah, well, you know, I side with the royal family. I don't think they're racist. Nobody said the entire royal family is racist. She didn't say the entire mm -hmm. family was. And they were very careful to point out that, nope, grandmother didn't say that. Um, I, I'm, my guess is it's Prince Charles, and that's just my guess, um, because I think she kind of reminds him a lot of, of Lady Diana. Um, but is, is, is it the entire, the entire family? No. But they're so, I'm sure there are factions of people who have their own feelings. Just like you said, you can't tell somebody how to feel, and you can't say that, yeah. this or that. And is that really... A bad question to ask how dark the baby's gonna be at the same time. Like, do you know? But that's how she's gonna ask, answer that question. I don't know. It's genetics. <laughs> well, even, it, even doctors can't tell you that. Yeah, you're right. But maybe it depends on tone. Like, <laughs> was the question like, oh, how dark is this baby gonna be? Or was the question like, I wonder how dark it's gonna be? It's gonna be so cute. You think she's uh, gonna have those great curly, yeah. curly curls? Uh, or is, is, is she not gonna have to tan? <laughs> I've been wanting one of these ever since I was a kid. I can't wait. <laughs> you know what? Now you put it that way, it doesn't matter the way it was asked. It was gonna be bad anyway. Yeah, it's gonna be bad. But but even still, I think uh and I think, you know, Harry even admitted that um he didn't think about the race issue until they started dating and then he started mm -hmm. seeing the stuff in the tabloids and kind of, as he put it, you know, walked a mile in her shoes. Yeah. Then it hit him, which says mm -hmm. a lot about him. Cause you figure if you grow up in that environment, I'm sure there's not a lot of black people, you know, that are yeah. working in there. So I'm sure he might've been taught or told or heard certain things, but he still went out and you know, who he fell in love with is who he fell in love with regardless of their skin color. So yeah. I think kudos to him. But now that it, I think he sees it and sees how it's going to impact his son. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're soon to be daughter, you know, um, as well. I think a lot of times biracial children, depending on, you know, how they grow up, they, they either get attacked by black people because they're not black enough or they get attacked by white people because they're not white enough. Or and both. So, or both. Exactly. Right. And so they're always fighting that battle. And I think he sees mm -hmm. what his kids are going to have to go through now, you know? So who, I, I don't know how the, the story is going to, going to go with them. And, you know, what they're going to do uh, going forward. I don't think Megan is as bad as people make her seem to be. Right. Um, um, you know, and just a whole lot of lies and people believing what's in the tabloids, which, you know, you just can't really do. You just can't. So, and, yeah. And we give this bullshit to Paris Wogan, but I also got to give this bullshit to the royal family as well for pulling a security detail. Seriously? He's still a member of the royal family, his wife and his child. It's not like... If you want to say that you're not going to give protection to an illegitimate child, I still think that's wrong, but I get it. Mm -hmm. But this is his wife, his son. Mm -hmm. Seriously? So that, this, I think, I think they've really shaken up quite a bit. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens from here. But um, definitely, Piers Morgan is is the biggest loser in this entire thing walking off of his show because um one of his um one of his uh castmates um or, or showmates was calling him out on his bullshit just like yo no you're ma you've been dragging her through the tabloids yeah and, and, and dragging, dragging her through the media for years and she's yet to say anything about you so what is what is your deal and so yeah. he's like, I'm not I, I'm not gonna take this so the minute somebody calls him out he walks off and doesn't want to deal with it it was Perfect example of a bully that wants to just speak his shit. And when somebody turns it back on him, walk away and go, oh, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Yeah. All right, well, you know, so Pierce, whatever, man. It's, it's, I, I, I would like to just give him a big fuck you and, you know, but he, he's not going to care. Just like she doesn't care whatever he's saying about him. So I'll keep that fuck you to myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ready to get out of here, man? Yeah. Yeah. Ready to do it. So what you drinking today, buddy? Little uh, Angel's Envy Ooh, today. That's, yeah. First of all, first of all, that's not a little. Hold that glass <laughs> up again. That's, Jesus it's a Christ. Oh, it's, it's a, little a little glass. That's why. Okay. Yeah, it's a little how many glass. Ounces is that? A, See, seeing that you are bartender, how many ounces is that? How many ounces can fill it in this glass? Um, I don't know. I'd say maybe four. So that's about two ounces. Three to right four. 
Okay. Yeah. So it's like a shot. Okay, okay. All right. I'm just saying. Judgy? Yes, uh, a little. <laughs> <laughs> because this is a little. <laughs> that's that's just a swallow. That's a taste. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm doing. I'm doing a taste. And yeah. I, I, it's in a Ducé cup, but it's actually this is actually my um my Four Roses small batch again. You know, I love, I got love it. My got Four it. Roses small batch. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going with this. Just like you, straight up, not no rocks. Yeah, just something. Mine, to sip I on. can take in one swig. Yours, you'll be sipping on that for a while. Yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> what are we toasting to today, man? Um, let's toast to you know safe travels for you and mm-hmm. for me. We're both gonna be on the road this week, so hopefully have some safe travels. Wear your mask, all mm-hmm. that type of stuff. Uh, but yeah, but it should be some good adventures. Hopefully we'll have some good travel stories that we can share maybe next week. Indeed. You know, like you say, safe travels, mask up, follow the law. And uh, guys, no shirt, no shoes, no mask, no service. And don't and forget crumpets. to sign don't forget to sign the pullout policy after that third kid. <laughs> The pull-out policy. I was going to name this podcast Crawfish Season, but pull-out policy seems so much better. <laughs> pull-out policy is good. <laughs> I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm Just Terrell. Remember to follow us at Yanni Rude, at Just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yes. Be sure to like and comment. Send us some of your random thoughts or some of your bullshit, and we'll talk about it on the show. It's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.